Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you are doing all right. I hope you're having a good morning and uh, that God woke you up ready for something today. Regardless of how we're feeling, regardless of, of, of what our emotions are, man, God woke us up and he's got something for us. I'm just curious, what are you what are you looking forward to today? I think sometimes sometimes we even take for granted that we have a, a, a day that God gives us. So just good morning, Curtis. So type in, Marcy already put the ducks, the moving clouds. Um, what are you looking forward to today? Type it in there. Participate. Join in with us. Um, one of the... One of the things that that I've seen happen just with us reading scripture together is God is building a community with a group of people, and they're not all from here. Uh, we've got a couple from the the Great White North uh, up in Michigan and Ohio, and um, morning, Nathan. Yeah, we've missed you. Um, so what are you excited about today? Today. Just type it in there. What are you looking forward to? What do you what do you want to see? How are you wanting to see God move? Good morning, Liz. How are you wanting to see uh, God shift you, m- move you? Um, we're walking through the 21 days of hope. And yesterday was a difficult one. And I'm going to confess I, uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't do mine yesterday, but um, good morning, Nancy. Uh, but I'm going to do it today. A random, not so random act of kindness. Uh, so have you been doing the 21 days of hope? Have you been, have you been taking hope in and then pouring hope out? Because that's what it's for. You can still do it. You can go to the website, newsoundcommunity.church. And you can tap on that that card, uh, 21 Days of Hope, and you can still participate. I think we're on day 10 now. So you got 11 days that you can you can have hope and give hope. So uh, I'm really glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're here to hear this word this morning. This is, this is a tremendous passage of scripture. It's truth that God speaks through Paul to the church, and, and it's something that we need to hear. And so I... Uh, I'm glad you joined and I'm going to pray for us because we believe that the Holy Spirit leads us in all truth. We believe the Holy Spirit reveals the truth of God to us in our soul, heart, mind. We believe that God uh, corrects, um, corrects wrong thinking about him. We believe that God gives us clarity on who he is and who we are to him. So, that's what we're going to pray about this morning, and we're going to pray believing that God's going to lead us in all truth. So let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you for today. We thank you for the gift of a new day. We thank you that you do not leave us to ourselves, but you give us your Holy Spirit to lead us in all truth, to show us who you are, to reveal to, to us who we are to you, that you are passionate about us, that you love us. And so, God, I pray that you'll open our eyes. I pray that we would expect to experience you this morning as we read your word. I pray that you would clear, uh, that you would set anything right in our minds that maybe we thought about you wrongly. Or I pray, God, that you would set things right in our minds that we have thought wrongly about ourselves. You're a good, gracious God. You're merciful in every way. Your mercies are new every morning. You give us a community, a community through technology. And I give you praise for that. I thank you for each person that's here, the ones who will come later. I pray that your word will come alive in us and will be changed. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for who he is to us, that he died for us, that he was raised for us. And that we get to experience new life through him. So I pray all these things in his name. Amen. All right. So 
We're going to be looking at Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. Good morning, Phyllis. Um, so before we get into this, I, I just want to point out that back in Ephesians 1, Paul tells us who he's writing this to. And he's writing this to the saints of the faith, to the saints, to the ones who believe in Jesus. And I don't know if you realize this about you, but if you follow Jesus, if you believe in who Jesus is, if you trust him, if you place your faith in him, you are not a sinner saved by grace anymore. You are a saint, a saint in the kingdom of God. And some of us have a hard time embracing that. Some of us look at our life and we're like, man, I know myself. I'm not a saint. You're not a saint because of you. You're a saint because of Jesus. And Paul tells us that. Paul opens this up for us in this passage of Scripture. So if you're following Jesus, if you're believing in Jesus, which I'm not really, yeah. So this is for you. Ephesians 2, beginning in verse 1. And you were dead in your trespasses and your sins. You were dead. Before we came to Jesus, you were dead. You thought you were alive. You acted alive, but you were dead. Y'all, our sin kills us. Our trespasses kill us. And yet Jesus brings us back to life. Notice that he uses the past tense. You were dead. In which, in your trespasses and sins, in which you previously walked, according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. I just need to point this out because I've talked about this a couple of times with a variety of people over the last two weeks. It's not only our sin. It's not only what we do, but there's another actor in the play. And it is the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. Satan wants to kill, steal, and destroy us. He wants to create so much havoc, so much chaos, and he wants to do it in your life and in my life. And if we don't realize that there is one who consistently comes against us, then we're, gonna, we're not going to know where our battle is. We're not going to know where the fight is. And so realize that. Jesus defeated him. That's taken care of. But realize he hadn't given up yet. Paul goes on. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and our thoughts. And we were by nature children under wrath, as the others were also. There is a wrath of God to come. It's not exciting to talk about. It's not something that everyone, anyone wants to hear about. But God is a just God. God keeps his promises, and God said that if you eat at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, if you're disobedient to me, you will surely die. And that's why he sent Jesus. That's why we're celebrating Lent, moving to the cross, because we needed a Savior. And so he sent Jesus because we were children under wrath. And then he says in verse 4, I love this phrase, but God. That's who you once were. You were children under wrath. You were children of disobedience, living with other children of disobedience. And then verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, he made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses. We are made alive in Jesus, even though we were dead. Why? Because we're good enough, because we do the right things, we go to church enough, we go to enough Bible studies, <clears throat> we read the Bible enough, we pray enough, no. The reason we've been made alive is because God is rich and mercy and has great love. It's because of him. If you ever find yourself doing things out of obligation, if you ever find yourself doing things because you think it will please God, the reason you're a saint is because of Jesus. The reason you're a saint is because God is rich in mercy and full of love and compassion. 
Our response to him by being obedient is a response, not an obligation. Then Paul goes on. He says, you are saved by grace. He also raised us up. He didn't just make us alive. He raised us up with Jesus, and he seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. He raised us up. He didn't just make us alive. He raised us up. He sets us with Christ. Why? So that he would be revealed. So that he might display his immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. But it's not just to us. It's to the world. It is as we experience the grace and the mercy and the kindness of God, we're to express that to others. We can't hold this to ourselves. So that's why we're raised up with Jesus. It says in verse 8, For you are saved by grace, the grace of God that's already there for you, through faith, belief in Jesus. And this is not from yourselves. You can't make this happen. I can't make this happen. It is God's gift. It's God's gracious gift, not from works so that no one can boast. You can work your tail off and you can try to be the best person and you can try to be the best Christian and you can try to know the scripture more than anyone else and you can tell people that you pray more than anyone else. That doesn't matter if you don't have faith in Jesus and if you don't trust in his grace, his mercy, and the fact that it is through him that we are saints. And then he says in verse 10, For we are his workmanship. You are his poem. You are his poema. He created you. He crafted you. He made you. And we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. So here's the thing. It's not working our way to God. The only way that we're in a relationship with God is through Jesus. Jesus is the one who made us alive. Remember, we were dead in our sins and our trespasses. Jesus made us alive, and then we're raised with Jesus so that God can be revealed. His goodness and his kindness can be revealed. It's nothing of our own doing. It's grace and belief in Jesus. But then it says that we are his workmanship, and we are created for what? We're created for works. We're created to do the work of the kingdom of God. Why? Because we've been raised up with Jesus. We've been made alive. So, do you realize that you are a saint? Do you realize that through Jesus, through his kindness, through his mercy, through his compassion, that you are a saint? And then do you realize that you have been restored, that you've been brought to life so that you can do the works that were prepared beforehand for you? For you, not for me. God has certain works for me to do out of my response and love for him. God has certain works for you to do out of your response and love for him. Man, praise be to God for his mercy, for his grace, for his goodness, for his kindness, for his compassion, for this gift that he's given us through Jesus, for life, for making us saints. Now, what are we going to do with it? Who are we going to tell about it? How are we going to live it out? How are we going to impact other people's lives? Because we just can't hold it in anymore. Y'all, that's who we're called to be. That's exciting to me. That's what it is to be a saint. So, man, what a great word. There, golly, there's so much meat in this. I just encourage you to go back 
and, and kind of live in it throughout the day. Just take little bites of it and just savor it and, and, and let it sit in there and just go, wow, God, by your mercy, I'm no longer under your wrath. By your goodness and kindness, you've saved me. You rescued me. And then pray this. Pray, God, open my eyes that I might see the works that you prepared for me long ago and give me the strength, the boldness, the ability to do those works. Put yourself in the game. You don't have to wait for the coach to ask you. He's already told you, you're supposed to be in the game. We're all supposed to be in the game. So, again, I'm so glad that you were here. If you come along later, I'm glad that you're here as well. God's changing us. God's molding us. God's reforming us. And so, we get to be in this together. The last thing I want to say to you is this, that we have Let's Talk that's coming up today at noon. And um, there's going to be some good stuff. It's going to be in reflection to this past Sunday and to what God revealed to us during worship. But we're going to be expanding on that. We're going to be talking about how it applies and, and, and how we can live that out. And so I hope you'll join us for that. Y'all, I love you. I thank God for you. God has something so much bigger for us as a, as a community. God has us where we are so that other people will know this amazing grace and kindness and mercy that he has so that other people will know that they don't have to live under the wrath of God anymore, that they can be saints and that God has purpose for them. It's our responsibility to let them know that. So I pray you have a great day. I pray that you experience the living God. I pray that, that you can taste him and see that the Lord is good. And then I pray that you'll share it with other people. And so I hope to see you at noon. And if I don't, until I see you again, I love you. I'll see you soon.